Hi, I'm Jennifer and I'm here to share the five things that teachers need to know for creating a virtual classroom in Zoom. Zoom has been an invaluable tool for me these past six years and here are three main ways that I've used it. One, to lead virtual instructional sessions for my colleagues to teach them something new. Two, to join countless numbers of video chat sessions with my colleagues to collaborate and share. Three, to attend dozens of, of webinars hosted by subject matter experts who hold question and answer sessions for learning. These are just five things that I think you'll need to get started, but please comment below if you have any questions or if you want me to create more videos to answer more of your questions. How to schedule a meeting. This is great for creating a virtual classroom or setting up time for office hours for Q&A with students. One great feature of scheduling a meeting is that it will put up a waiting screen if your students sign on before you do. Okay, so while I'm recording this, we are in the middle of the coronavirus pandemic and Zoom is offering a special perk for teachers where they can temporarily lift the 40 minute time limit for your sessions. So here is what it will look like when you sign up for that account. So if you are a teacher and you want to take advantage of this, be sure to use this. I will put a link down on the notes so you can click right through it. Now let's go visit your Zoom account. Okay. The domain name is zoom.us. I've already created my account. Let's go visit my profile here. So. Two things I want to mention on the profile, your profile ID. You do want to have a picture of you there, something that's recognizable to your students, because if for some reason you are not showing your face in the live session, by default, your profile picture is going to show. So it's important to set this up when you set up your account. Second, I want to point out the personal meeting ID. This is a number that's unique to you, and you can choose to have all your meetings using this meeting ID. but if you do that, you have a chance where a student may join a meeting that they weren't invited to because this meeting, they can just type this in when they want to join a meeting and they could be joining at the wrong time of day and stepping into the wrong meeting. So just be careful on that. I'm actually proposing that you don't use this personal meeting ID, that you choose to have a dynamically generated number for all your meetings just to make sure that you have the right people attending the right meetings. Okay, so I'm jumping over to settings. I'm on that left-hand menu and I clicked over here on settings and I wanna just go over just some of the options to consider. Host video. When you're hosting a video, you're probably gonna to wanna to show your face. So I think that this should be turned on. If you're in a classroom setting where you're leading a class with many other students attending, you're gonna probably wanna turn the participant video off. The great thing about Zoom is that you can have many people joining into the sessions and it can be a very collaborative meeting if that's what you want. But from teacher to student, you probably want to turn these videos off. You can turn this on during a session and I can show you how that's done. Audio type, you want to turn this to telephone and computer audio. This gives students the ability that for if some reason they cannot get audio on their computer, they've got the option here to dial in and hear what's going on. So I would just leave this on just to give everyone the option. Another setting I want to point out, uh, I mentioned earlier that I think you should be using dynamically generated meeting IDs. Well, here, I'm going to turn off using my personal ID here. I'm going to turn off using my personal ID here for either scheduling a meeting or for setting up an instant meeting just to force Zoom to create a new ID. Let's go over to meetings. So on the left hand side, I'm choosing the second option down and I'm coming over here to schedule a meeting. OK. putting in my topic and description. I'm going to schedule this meeting for tomorrow at 11 a.m. It's going to be an hour long meeting. Again, here 
because we set the meeting to generate automatically, it's just defaulting to here. I can always change it, but I'm going to keep this here. I am not requiring a meeting password because I don't want to ask my attendees to type in more numbers than they need to. And again, the default is the host will show, will have a video and the participants will not. And these are all the default settings that came out of the settings that I had set earlier. Here is enable waiting room. This is a nice little feature. What will happen is if someone joins the meeting before you join the meeting that you're hosting, a screen like this will appear. Pretty cool. I'm going to click on save. And this is my saved meeting. So here is my dynamically generated meeting ID. Again, the person who is attending your meeting will need to type this in so they can get into your classroom. You can also share this URL if to anybody who wants to attend your meeting. This number actually matches your meeting ID. So let's say that I want to maybe post this on my Blackboard or my Google Classroom. Here we go. So that's what the URL will look like. Let's get go back in there. If I want to copy the invitation, this is what Zoom generates. So if you want to set up a meeting, you can actually copy all of these contents with all of the meeting information to an email or to your Blackboard or wherever you need to do it so people can see what the, where the meeting is and they have information to get on there. And this is what this upcoming meeting screen will look like after you've set up your meeting. And there you go. How to start a meeting. We will go over how you start a meeting for a ad hoc class that you want to do right at this moment or for recording a session that you might want to post up online somewhere for your students to watch later. Let's create an instant meeting. We're going to start by visiting zoom.us again. I am still logged in. I'm going to click on the upper right hand menu option, which says host a meeting, and I'm going to choose video on. Okay, Zoom requires that you download an app to your computer, to your mobile device, including iPads and phones. Here, I am being prompted to open up the actual app and get into the meeting. So here we are logging in. And here I am. Hello. So I want to point out that we have a meeting ID up here. This is your dynamically generated ID. And it's just good to know where to find it so you can tell other people how to join your meeting, what that number is. Um, there's a couple of cute, nice features down here that I wanted to point out. Mute. I often join meetings early and I'll turn mute on right away because I don't want them to hear what's going on in my house before the meeting starts. Also, I will, if I'm a participant in a meeting, I will keep myself muted just because otherwise they'll hear distracting noises in my house and if I need to actually talk, I'll unmute myself and talk. And here is a stop video option I wanted to share with you on the lower left hand side. When you do stop video, you actually turn the live feature off and you'll actually show your profile picture to everybody else who's in that meeting. I also want to show you the invite feature. Here again, you have your meeting ID. So that's a good place to find it if you don't know what that number is and you need to tell someone how to get onto your meeting. You can also use the feature of copy URL, where if you click on this, it'll actually copy your meeting ID to your clipboard. And this Zoom is showing this here. And you can actually paste that meeting ID and see how it's different from the other meeting that we scheduled because we have that default setting of generating a unique ID each time. I also want to show you another cool feature of Zoom. Let's get back to there. And this is that what we see when we click on the invite button. 
we want to copy an invitation. I just want to show you again. We've seen this. We saw this in the last video. I'm going to shut this over. And this is that meeting invite that you can email to people that you want to participate in your meeting. And there you go. Let's close this down. Go back to the session. Let's say I want to. Oops. I'm going to exit full screen. And I want to end this meeting. And close here. And I'm going to choose end meeting for all. A sample session. Let's take a look at what a session looks like and explore the features that you will most likely need or use during that session. Okay, let's take a look at a sample session and we've got one going on right now. Here you go. Hey everybody, here I am along with Mr. Woodpecker, Mr. Bear, Pinocchio, who does not have a profile picture, and Tigger. So anyway, I wanted to show you what it looks like if you turn video on. As you can see, it can be distracting if you're trying to teach a lesson from one person to a whole class of full of people. So what we could do here is I just clicked on the option manage participants at the bottom of the screen here. And I'm going to turn this off just so you're not distracted by me talking. Um, you, if you click this here, then all of a sudden on the right hand side, we see the list of participants. Now, let's say we hear some noise in the background. We want to turn that all off, especially if you're teaching your class. And I'm going to not allow participants to unmute themselves because I don't want them to have that kind of control and disturb the meeting. So I'm going to click yes here. And now everybody else is muted. Another feature that I want to show you that's down here in the bottom, it's called chat. We do want our participants to be able to communicate to us and ask questions. So here there's already a chat going on. You can go and type here. And there you go. So you can go ahead and allow the chat while you're sh sharing your lesson. Also, you could, if you wanted to, stop the video. For everybody, I don't, I guess there's not a way to turn it off all the way. I'm not sure. Actually, I think you could do it in your settings. So here is just me talking. And there you go. Now that you know what a live session looks like, let's go over screen sharing so you know how to share something from your desktop like your PowerPoint presentation or a Word document or some other document that you would like to show your students. Let's look at how to do a screen share during a session. We're going to go back to zoom.us. I'm in my account and I'm going to go into host meeting with video on. We're going to open up the app. Here we go. Hello again. I'm going to make this full screen so we can see what's going on here. And I'm going to now use the share button, which is at the bottom of the screen. I'm going to click on that and it shows me all of the all the apps that are open. And I'm going to my PowerPoint presentation. So here we go. You see me on the upper right hand side talking and here is my PowerPoint presentation. So I can go through the this there. You can go through the screens. And another cool feature is the annotate, where you can actually you could stamp. I want to make a point about this sentence right here. I'm putting this guy here, and you could draw. Clearly, I don't know how to draw. There, I'm drawing a line. So you can use that during your session. That's how you do a screen share. Recording. Now let's see how recording a video works. So it's probably likely that one of your students will not be able to attend your live session. So a great feature to use from Zoom, we're going to zoom.us, is the record feature. So we're going back into the upper right hand corner, host a meeting, video on. We're going to download the app. Here, so this is the last button that we have not seen yet called record. 
There you go. So now we are recording the session. Make sure you have enough disk space in your computer for recording your session. Also, you will have to upload it somewhere. Uh, my favorite place to upload a video is a YouTube account. You can set that video to unlisted so you can share the link to for your students, but it won't be searchable on Google or YouTube either. And let's go, let's say I wanna do a video with my PowerPoint. There we go. I'm gonna stop that share. And let's exit the meeting. And we'll see that Zoom automatically starts saving that recording onto your hard drive. So as I said before, you're gonna to want to upload this somewhere. I suggest YouTube because you can create a free account and you can post it as unlisted, but you can also share the link to that unlisted video with your students on Blackboard, Google Classroom, or wherever you have to share information. And here are the videos that we've got. Thanks for watching. Now, if you have any other questions about Zoom, please comment below and ask your questions. I will do my best to answer you, or I will create another video if that helps. Wait, don't go yet. Don't forget to like this video and share it with friends. Also, subscribe to my channel for future tutorials.